Hey everyone, welcome to the next episode of Mathematics for the Impatient with Stan Cladco, um, CTO and co-founder of Scale. NFTs, they are the hot buzzword. It's super important. Um, they have amazing potential, um, but people don't necessarily understand all the tech behind them. So I think our first question is gonna be, um, can you tell us a little bit, Stan, about ERC721, which is the NFT token, token standard, and uh, ERC1155, which is also, uh, I think, the, the more updated uh, NFT token standard. Tell us a little bit about them. Yeah, let's start with ERC721 because this is kind of you know, a standard that everyone knows. So ERC721 NFTs are basically objects. You know, they, they provide uh, someone ability to own objects in a virtual world. And to understand how this works, I would like to provide this real time, real life analogy. So when I was in at elementary school, when I was a kid, uh, in Ukraine, winters are really, really cold. So I would have this fur, fur coat and I would go, my mom would put this fur coat on me and I would go to the elementary school. And then when I get, got to the school, I would actually, there was like a common room where everybody would leave the codes and then I would actually go and, and, and study. But the point is that since I was a kid, I couldn't even read at that time. So my mom put my name on a label, you know, like every, every code has a label. You usually hang this code by, by this label. And she would just put my name on the label. So if a teacher, would want to find out whose code is that, the teacher would just read the label and find out my name. And then hypothetically, let's say, you know, had a brother, like a younger brother, and then my mom would want to give this code, transfer this code to my younger brother, then she would probably cross out my name on the label and put uh, his name. It's pretty much, it's a very simple idea, you know, like if you want to show who owns a particular object, you just put the name of this person on the object, but on Ethereum, there's no names. What we have are those wallet addresses, which are pretty, pretty long numbers, but the idea is the same. You basically have a virtual object, you store this object on, on blockchain, and then uh, in addition to the object yourself, you store the number, which is the address of the owner. If you want to switch uh, the owner, if you want to sell this object, you pretty much cross out the previous number, delete it, and add the address of the new owner. So ownership transfer happens by just essentially changing the label, and the label now has the name or the address of the new owner. That's how ERC721 NFTs work. Now, there are several problems uh, with this thing. One problem is that when the NFTs, the NFTs used to be really simple and one could actually put the entire NFT on blockchain, the entire mathematical object. But now NFTs are like huge files, you know, you can easily have an image which is like one megabyte. And um, in this case, you know, how much is it to store an image of one megabyte on, on Ethereum blockchain, extremely expensive. So people have been like cutting edges. So if you go to things like OpenSea or other exchanges, and you see an NFT, the actual image is unfortunately stored not on the blockchain itself because that will be prohibitively expensive. So it's stored somewhere else. Many, many cases it's stored on Google Cloud or AWS or any other type of uh, centralized provider, which does create a problem because at some point this, this, this centralized provider say Google or Amazon or whatever may decide that the image needs to be removed, for instance, because of copyright infringement or because they think the image is not appropriate according to their standards, or maybe they think the image uh, is a plagiat or infringes someone else's rights. So there are many, many reasons, you know, but the point is that this new, these NFTs, they provide some type of a compromise where since the image is stored on a centralized platform, there's a little a bit of a problem that the image can be actually deleted 
And there's no guarantee if you buy an NFT, the NFT actually will be there like 50 years from now. So that's the problem number one. Problem number two is that because Ethereum mainnet gas prices are extremely expensive and they're going up, creating and uh, transferring NFTs has become uh, prohibitively expensive. Like, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, just for fun, I, I wanted to try how OpenCV works. And I just got an image and uh, I uploaded this image, which is probably gonna, will, the image actually went to Google Cloud, but even without the image as the label, the NFT, the, the label saying that this image belongs to Stan Kletko, I paid $250 of, of gas fees. So it's extremely expensive to create NFTs or Ethereum mainnet, even though that the NFT itself is just uh, my address basically, and also the URL of the image on Google Cloud. So this minimum information, but even this minimum information, creating uh, ERC 721 NFTs is extremely expensive and the same transferring. Transferring ERC 721 NFTs is also very expensive. And that's the problem. So now, ERC 1155 aims to solve this problem using essentially a hack. Uh, so uh, usually for regular ERC, uh, the regular NFTs, the address of the owner is stored, the label is stored in regular storage on the video blockchain, which is extremely expensive. And that's, what, that's why creating is expensive, transferring is an expensive. RC 1155 does this hack instead of uh, storing information in a regular storage, it stores it in a different cheaper storage, which is called block storage. Essentially, it doesn't store it in the regular EVM, it, it stores it in a, in a block. And it, it, this storage is cheaper and you pay less money for it. The problem is that if, if, if an NFT has been created a long time ago, the storage goes back in history. So if you want to know if, if, you, if you have this NFT or not, if you want to read the information, you have to download the entire history of blockchain. So essentially it's harder to read, it's harder to use, but it's cheaper. And because, because gas costs are so high, you know, people are switching to this less convenient, harder to use way, because this is essentially a hack. It's not supposed to be like this, but because of, of huge storage fees, they're using this hack to store NFTs in kind of as crooked way, but cheap way, basically. That's one of the reasons ERC 1155 exists. The second reason comes from the unification desire. That's a really interesting idea because let's say we have NFTs. NFTs are like objects, right? Like they're unique objects, although you could have say, 10 identical objects. Let's say you have a collection of stamps and you print a particular like stamp 10 times. So the stamp is not unique, but there are only 10 objects that are guaranteed, guaranteed to exist. So there is actually a spectrum between being unique, NFT, NFT and being something like cryptocurrency where you can have as many holders of it as, as you wish. There is a middle ground where you have like 10 holders or 20 holders. So there's actually abstraction. Uh, you can think about uh, NFTs and cryptocurrencies as actually a spectrum. And if you look at a cryptocurrency such as Ethereum, Ethereum has this quantum tiny pieces of Ethereum which are indivisible called way. So way are these tiny, tiny pieces of Ethereum where no one wants to have one way because it's extremely low amount of money, but still any amount of Ethereum can be represented as a very large number of this tiny quanta way. So in a sense, Ethereum is also an NFT, it's just that every, every holder of Ethereum holds this enormous number of way NFTs. So, so there's, there's an abstraction which allows to think, to, to join together two different logical things. One thing is an NFT and another thing is cryptocurrency. If you just think about cryptocurrency as about uh, 
many, many, many quanta, where each quanta is each particular quanta within an FT. So because you can then think about the cryptocurrency as just, you know, a collection of huge number of this NFT quantas, you can have uh, an abstraction where both cryptocurrency and NFT can be represented by the same abstraction. And then it simplifies things. If you do sort of engineering, you don't have to work with these two different abstractions. If you have a wallet, you can also use the same abstraction. So there's a way to specify both cryptocurrencies and NFTs in, in the same language, which actually helps you to have better software engineering because it's just one single thing, better wallets and potentially less, less bugs. So that's what also RC 1155 is about. First, less of a gas costs by essentially making things a little bit harder to use and using a hack. And second, unifying, unifying the notion of uh, an NFT and uh, cryptocurrency at a logical level. Very cool. So um, because we're on a scale channel, why don't we ask sort of the next obvious question, which is why use scale for NFTs? Yeah, that's, that's a great, great question. I'll, I'll come back to this analogy of like me going to the elementary school and this fur coat. So, so if you look at a typical NFT today, the, the label and the code are different places. The label is on the blockchain, but the co code is the Google Cloud. It's almost like I have a label from a fur coat, but the code is somewhere in a storage and someone can just take it from the storage. So when I, if I just hold the label, it's not, I'm not sure that actually I will be able to retrieve my, my fur coat. So the problem storing NFT information on blockchain and actual images in centralized services is that if you hold an NFT like that, there's absolutely no guarantee that you will actually hold it forever. You can, you can buy an NFT on OpenSea today and you can pay, you know, $1,000 for it. And then for whatever reason, you go to Google Cloud and it's simply not there, either because Google did this on purpose or maybe there was just some software error. You know, sometimes images disappear, you know, from, from centralized services and you just will lose your NFT. So NFTs, as we have them today on Ethereum mainnet, have this weakness that they are only very partially decentralized. And because there's a huge part with the storage of images is not decentralized, you have this problem of actually not being able, may not, you basically don't have a guarantee that you will actually own this object forever. On scale, because everything is cheap and because scale can store images and videos and music. And you can actually, when you store your fur code, the label goes to blockchain, but also the code itself, the fur code goes to the blockchain. So the entire thing is just in one place. So if you own an NFT on scale and, and you see the label, you know for sure that the fur code is also there. So the huge as a, uh, advantage of scale versus other platform is it provides a full decentralization guarantee and everything's stored on the same place. So that's pretty much the one and most important uh, advantage of scale. And the second advantage of scale is that because there are so many scale chains, uh, we can pretty much guarantee forever that transfers of NFTs will be for free. You can pretty much for free transfer any of NFT of NFTs to anyone else. Not only transfer, but probably for also creation of NFTs will be free. So while, as I told you, like on OpenSea, I created an NFT, I paid 250 bucks for it. On scale, you'll be able to create an NFT for, for free because there is so much storage, so many chains that essentially a scale could be, one could implement something like YouTube. On YouTube, if you upload images, you don't pay for it, right? Or you upload video, you don't pay for it. So the huge advantage of scale first is being able to store everything together you can move it for free. And that's why, and, and all of this is enabled by one single thing. The fact that scale is the only Ethereum compatible platform that has many, many, many chains. Because we have so many chains, we have opportunities to make things free and super cheap uh, compared to others that have only a single chain. So that's the main advantage of, of scale for NFTs. Now, if you look at 
you can still run the ERC eleven fifty five and FT is on scale. Although, uh, frankly, you know the guest costs argument doesn't hold anymore. So you don't really need this hack, you know, to to be able to transfer NFTs cheaply. We transfer them for free anyway. But the second advantage of ERC eleven fifty five, the fact that unified unified two different things, still hold. So people could still run ERC eleven fifty five NFTs on scale just to unify things and make things easier to program and use. Well, the second advantage is probably not so much needed because our NFTs are anyway transferred for free. Awesome. So that is the rundown on NFTs. Thank you, Sam, as always. Um, uh, check us right. out down Thank below. You. We're on Twitter. Uh, you can check us out on our Telegram group. We'd love to hear your questions and hope you enjoyed. Great.